Merry Christmas, every, everyone. Hope you had a great holiday. This is a bonus episode. We're going to give you, I know that you're still out there and unwrapping presents and finding that paper everywhere. That's all right. We want to go over one of the big standout things. This defense is on the rise. We have to capitalize on what they did against the Seahawks and move that forward. One guy that stood out to me was Legereus Sneed. We're going to talk about him, Chris. Was there one guy that stood out to you on defense as well? You know, there was Nick Bolton was all over the field. Willie Gay was all over the field. Uh, really impressed by what I saw from those guys. I still like what I see from Joshua Williams, even though he was getting called for a couple of penalties uh, at the end of the first half. I think that some of those penalties, one at least one of them was a little questionable. But I understand why you want to talk about Snead. And I think to me, there's another reason that this is so big for Kansas City. And it goes back to Shaverius Ward last year in, in the aspect of, they let him start to travel with the team's best receiver. That is not something Kansas City had done previously at any time with Spagnolo, with Spagnolo's defense. And it seems like that may not be that hard on a defensive unit. It's extremely difficult because that changes up what your assignments are going to be because you never know what side of the field you're going to be on. You're doing whatever assignment for that side of the field, and you could be on one side or you could be on the other based on where – Metcalf in this instance was lining up. If you're, you know, McDuffie or, um, you know, Joshua Williams and you're on the other side of the field where you're not used to playing, it's just one of those things. Right. It's more, it's a bigger deal than people give it credit for. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a bigger mental Mm -hmm. challenge than a physical one. It it takes, and it changes the whole defense. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was, was we were going this, yeah, (laughs) going the exact same place. Takes the whole defensive unit to be involved in that. It does. And as much as Willie Gay and Nick Bolton stood out for for locking down the middle, and we've talked ad nauseum from back before training camp about the middle of the field between the hashes being important and that middle tier beyond the defensive front and in front of the secondary being important. Those guys are locking it down. But this is a different change. It requires an all-around corner like Trent McDuffie they can switch with you. And that's basically what we saw against the Seattle Seahawks is that Jerry Sneed took DK Metcalf, period. It traveled. And, and for those of you who don't know the term, traveling means that you are on a man-on-man matchup and you go wherever he goes on the field. It doesn't matter if he lines up in the slot or in a stack or out wide at X or wherever he is, you're there with him. That is a level above. That's working towards the elite status in this league of being a shutdown man-match type player it requires that your teammates do something too and for Trent McDuffie that's the switch from being an outside corner going into the nickel so that both Josh Williams and Jalen Watson could man the other outside position so it allows you to mix and match that way and it does take two Legereus was the nickel guy to Chavarius Ward last year and the roles have changed I want to go through a couple specifics but what stood out to you well, I, I just want to—I want you to explain this because you're going to be able to get this through to people a little bit better than I would. But it also changes how you play zone defense. Mm-hmm. You're still matched up with the guy, but you have to still stay true to your zone principles and how all that interchanges with everything. Yeah, it, it's about feel at that point because you got to understand what your man is doing because he's your primary responsibility. But you understand where all the zone overlaps are and what your yeah. other guys are doing, so that when. As we saw with Legere, seen against the Seahawks, when you feel you have an opportunity to come off and go make a play, maybe that's to get a turnover. Maybe it's just to, to get a TFL. You're able to do that. And so it is the mental side and the recognition, both visually and understanding the concepts that are thrown at you, to be able to go do that. And one but it also, changes, it also changes the zones just a little bit because you have one last man. That's all I was going to say. True. Yeah, the, the zones get wider. The gaps yep. are bigger. And guys have to cover all the way around. But one drive stands out because they went from a zone early. Um, Willie got uh, a nice stop on a two-yard run. Um, Jalen, no, I'm sorry, Josh Williams got uh, a PBU on a slant. That was a nice play. And then they kind of switched it off, and they went straight man. And this is where we saw this was the roughest drive for the Chiefs, but it was also one that stood out because LeJerry Sneed got to go one-on-one. And the first one is he got beat on a go route where it was an outside release, but because he had no contact with him, DK Metcalf is is not only fast, but he's that sizable kind of Adonis type guy. If you don't disrupt the route, he gets past you. And he is the speed, one of the few receivers that can accelerate past LeJarius Need. That happened. He comes back on the next one, and he gets beat by uh, going to an out route and hitting right at the out of bounds. 
that's important as well because now they're, they're stemming the route differently to get that option. So what is Legereus come back with? And this is, again, this is Legereus and C-Spec and Dave Merritt for that point, working together. He comes back and he goes to get physical, to stop and get those disruptions. Out routes are a timing route as well. You have to be able to stop that. And he goes for that press punch. He missed a little bit, caught the bottom of the face mask, gets the flag. If he doesn't do that, it's a turnover for Juan Thornhill in the back, and that accomplishes the goal. But beyond that, they get to rebound. And after that drive in that game, it was very much a dry, a, a, a situation where Legere Sneed had DK Metcalf where he wanted him for the most part. Outside of that drive, DK only got like 37 yards. This was a success in scheme for the defense. And I think something they have to build on. Do you see that? Yeah, I think they're going to have to build on it. The question is, how do you implement it going forward? Because I don't think you pull that out this next game against the Broncos. But I do think you pull it out for the Raiders game. Because yeah. I think you, yeah, I think you put Snead on Devonte Adams and you just let him go. Yeah, and you see how he can do it. In in the reason you do that, and maybe you do it with Sutton this game. Maybe you do it against the Broncos, so he has a couple of games where he can get the practice at it. But you do that because you're probably going to want to do that in the playoffs. You're probably mm-hmm. going to want to see him on a Stephon Diggs or a Jamar Chase. Say what you want about him in the past on those guys. It would not shock me to see. Spagnuolo go back to that in those situations. I, I can the agree. Bengals are different. The Bengals are a little different because they have such a great receiving core. Yeah, three-headed Medusa makes it very tough because it's not just a, yep. a two-guy interchange here. And I agree with you. It is something they could do again this week. Jerry Judy lit them up last time they played the Broncos. That's coming again this week. Sure. Do they want to give that attention to Judy or do they want to let Trent give that attention to Judy? Because, again, it takes two players to travel. Because one guy has to be able to make up for the other. Maybe it's a reverse here. And maybe they feel comfortable enough that they can try this out. I hope that they do. I'm really interested to see how it works out. But what that does is puts a little bit more stress and a little bit more knowledge back on the other rookies and Watson and Williams and the safety group. I thought Cook had a game. We didn't talk about him yesterday. I'm sorry, on Saturday. Um, But I thought Cook came up and made some plays. Had a couple of nice things that he, again, is another layer on the back. Exactly. Allows those guys to do their job, and he's got the rest locked down. Overall, I think we're right on the cusp of seeing this defense take a turn up in the secondary. Yeah, and if they do that, that's going to be great going into the playoffs. And the the thing that I was really impressed with, and there's another guy we didn't talk about at all on Saturday, uh, and I know we're talking about press coverage and, and pass coverage, but Danny Shelton did play. I am very curious to go back and, and rewatch some of his snaps. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because that was a, he stepped in for Saunders, and I would imagine that Shelton actually played more snaps than you would guess that he normally would, mainly because they knew that he's probably not going to continue to be playing for him, and they want to get the snaps off of other players. That would be my guess. Uh, but I'm so curious about that. But you start looking at how this pass defense can continue to play, and the whole reason I even bring up Danny Shelton is you start looking at what the pass rush did. The pass rush really never sent people. It wasn't something where they blitzed much. It was a matter of they literally went with four guys most of the day. That's huge. If you can do that and you can get you can be successful on defense and get pressure with just four, that is huge for any defense. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. This is a special bonus. Hope you guys had a great holiday. We're going to end it here. We'll be back tomorrow with that show, talk a little bit more and about where they're going as we get ready to look forward to the rematch with the Denver Broncos. Thanks for spending your time with us today. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow.